Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with our Wednesday guest, longest running guest, and frankly, fan favorite, Anna Kelly. How you doing, Anna? I'm doing great. Good to be here as always. Yes. Hey, so something I've been playing with, something I've been preaching in my daily financial news that I just love to talk to you about is, A, I think inflation is a tax uh, and it hits everyone. It's, it's uh, you know, top to bottom. It's not tax the rich. It's not this. Nobody gets away from inflation. We all eat. We all use gas. We all have housing, health care, child care. We all buy clothes. I mean, everything is going up, up, up. So what yeah. I like to tell people is inflation is a tax. Stop thinking it's not. And that uh, nobody, no one can beat inflation. However, if you pay attention, you can use it. So what do you think of those kind of two statements? Absolutely. Yes, we are teaching the same language, right? Um, everybody hurts. And, and unfortunately, it hurts those that are average income or less, you know, mm -hmm. the most, because as a percentage of their income, everything's going up. I just filled my car with gas yesterday. So I'll use gasoline, right? Mm -hmm. um, it was like $2, you know, over the last year or so up here. I think it was three seventy three. dollars Wow. 37 cost me $76 to fill up my, you know, very small SUV tank. And I was like, I don't remember ever seeing prices up this high. Yeah. Gas. And, and do, do you use um, natural gas for heating in the winter in your area? Y yes. Propane. Propane. Me, but yeah. yes. Cause I also hear natural gas is up. We don't use it in California, but I heard that's at, a, at a, like a 10 year high. It's like five bucks. And it used to be at two and a half or two eighty or something. It's, yeah. it's, um, it's going to be a, it, it, it's not, it's no longer going to be a problem. It is a problem. Yes. And, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's like a tax to your point, because everybody has to pay it. If you want the goods and there's limited supply and there's more supply chain disruptions happening and probably going to continue to happen, right? It's not necessarily getting better for various reasons. Um, when, when there's limited supply and a lot of demand prices go up. So what do you do? You have to think about how do I offset this? How do I work? You know, the first thing in my mind is how do I work to expand my means to be able to afford the increased costs? Yep. Because saving isn't going to work real well when it's everyday things that you you have to spend the money to, to live mm -hmm. um, and to have food and shelter. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got to figure out how can I expand my means? And real estate is a way to do that for sure. Yeah. And I, I'm really getting people to, to, to think that... The, Again, I go back to that 50-year spreadsheet, the 70s. It was eye-opening to me. If you just repeat what, if, if, if you could go back in time and buy real estate in 1970 or 71 and just hold it a decade, you did really, really well. Real estate doubled, rents went up 116%. And again, you had the decade low interest rate. And I yeah. think the setup is the same, right? Yes. And that's where right now interest rates. So, you know, we talked on the first um, video today about interest rates, right? I got a great deal done because the rate is unbelievable. And so if real inflation, let's just talk real numbers, right? Sure. Um, if it, right now they're saying inflation's five, I think <laughs> much higher, yeah, right? Much higher. Let's it's go much, nine or 10. Yeah. And we talk about this, you know, a lot about CPI, not including really everything that we really spend. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's but let's just say it's five to be okay. really conservative, sure. right? I can get loans right now on real estate in an LLC name between 3.5 and 4%. Easy. Yeah, you know, that's like 20% down easy, mm -hmm. even 15% down money. So if I can borrow money to buy real estate yeah. below the rate of inflation, the bank is taking the inflation hit because they're lending me their money. My yes. property happens to be collateral but it's not my money. The bank is lending me money that I get to fix at this rate that's below inflation. And essentially I make money on the spread, exactly. right? Plus I have all this rental income. Plus when inflation goes up and the cost of everything goes up, rents go up and therefore the value of your property goes up. So you, yeah. you don't really beat inflation. I like to say we beat inflation. Well, you can use it. Yeah, I mean- You're it, using it. Yeah, you're using inflation. Right. Yeah. And again, it's all three of those things. And I want a lot of people to follow one rental at a time just to realize you've been given a gift. Yes. You very likely have decade low interest rates right now. They can get loans at like the low threes, right? Because they don't have the portfolios that we do. 
And some of them, they can even get in the high twos, uh, but let's even say the low threes. And if yeah. inflation's at 5%, there's a huge spread. And again, folks, get 30-year money if you can. I strongly recommend it. And just don't buy anything. Don't bet on appreciation. Make sure cash flows day one. No alligators. You know, read the book. But yeah, just if you get enough of those, right? If you get one, eh, but you get two, three, four, you're beating your inflation is your friend. You don't complain that the gas is up. You're like, cool, right? And when you Correct. have a portfolio of hundreds of units, you're like, okay, great. The vegetables yeah. cost more, but. Yeah. You know, I thought about that yesterday as I was pumping my gas and it was over $76. You know, I was like, I can't believe this. And then I thought, I'm so blessed. Yeah. I'm so, so fortunate to, to have started this real estate journey mm -hmm. and to not have it hurt me in terms of my daily budget. But I know that for most Americans, it's really hurting. Yeah. You know, most Americans don't even save, don't have enough extra every month to save 10% of their income. Mm -hmm. So if their costs go up 10%, you're now saving nothing yeah. and maybe having to dip into your savings. And so, you know, you have to think about not only how can I, how can I try to beat inflation or use it, but you have to realize that every dollar that you have sitting in cash, because you need more money, you have it sitting in cash, is being eaten away by inflation. And the equity in your home is being eaten away by inflation. And so, if you don't learn how to use money as a tool to offset whatever's happening in the economy, it's going to hurt you. But oh, if yeah. you use it as a tool and you use your equity, for example, to buy safe, nice rentals in really good areas with really good schools, low supply, lots of demand, low crime, those properties are going to stay stable and they're going to continue to go up in value and bring you a little extra money every month to help you to absorb those extra costs without you losing your own money as a result of it. Yeah. And, and something that we've learned, or at least I, I've learned when I, again, went and looked at 50 years of, of information is inflation is sticky, right? It's inelastic. And when, once it's, you know, prices don't go down, right? Did rents go down in the housing crash? No, they actually went up, right? It's once, once, once Chipotle raised the price of their burrito bowl because of this or that reason, they're not going to lower it, right? right? If the supply chain loosens up and you know suddenly they have a bigger profit margin, their prices are done. They're, they're, very few companies are going to lower the price once it's absorbed. And uh, uh, Fed Chair Bullard, I think it is, out of St. Louis, he says companies are telling him they have no problem raising prices. And he's like, that is a problem because inflation is becoming sticky and people are expecting it. Right. And oh, by the way, we're going to go spend another two trillion to three and a half trillion to four trillion dollars into this environment. It's just going to make inflation worse. Right. Right. And we have a shortage of employees. Yes. I mean, Michael, I, I was talking to a friend of mine who's an investor. Right. And I noted that Arby's was closed at like four or five o'clock when I sent my husband to get me a sandwich. He said Starbucks was closed because they don't have employees. Local restaurants and Starbucks are closing at 4.30 or 5 o'clock because they can't get people to work because people are demanding higher wages to even go to work or they'll sit on unemployment. So if wages have to go up to incentivize people to even work, guess how they're going to pay for that? They raise cost of everything. You mean they're not going to just eat it in margin and lose money with every latte? I mean, th no. come on. they have to be good citizens. Why not? <laughs> Oh, don't get me started. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, it, it, again, we inflation is inflation is hotter and going to be longer than people expect. My opinion, yes. uh, and I think I think everything that this administration is doing is only going to make it worse. And oh, by and I guess I'll work this in here. What, I, I don't know if you've given this any thought. A month ago, I thought Jerome Powell was a lock to be renominated. I actually now think he's not going to be re renominated, and they're going to put somebody else in there on the liberal side. Yeah. That will send shockwaves through the financial system, in my opinion. What do you think? It very well could. I mean, I think the writing is so clear on the wall that I think most, you know, most investors are kind of looking at it and going, here, here we go. Like, yeah, get ready, it's coming. Right? <laughs> um, but I think that would kind of officially solidify it. Yes. Yeah. That position that one, because again, he, whether you like him or not, and I'm, and again, I'm, I've been very clear. I think Jerome Powell is repeating the mistakes of the Fed president in the '60s that led to the Great Inflation. So I'm not a Jerome Powell fan. Don't, don't. Yeah. But 
Sometimes you got to dance with the devil, you know. Yes. And this is not a time to change seats, in my opinion, for that job. That that would that would that would shake me a little bit. Yeah, I yes. I, I, <laughs> yeah, yes. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, I am. I mean, I I I don't like to get too political, but I just I'm really concerned with the direction that we're heading fiscally oh, yeah. for sure. You oh, know, regardless yeah. of your views on any pet issue, right? Fiscally, um, when your economy is already suf- suffering and struggling, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. don't raise four trillion dollars more and have you know, yell and say, remove the debt ceiling, borrow as much as you want. It, yeah. it can't go well. It doesn't go well for us as individuals when we get too much debt that's not working for us. Mm, yeah. Certainly doesn't go well for countries. And if you kind of solidify a changing of the guards in terms of the Fed, um, you know, you see, okay, that we're, we're really heading. Yeah, th- th- that, that one seat, if that happens, and again, I went from being... 100% it gets renominated a month ago to like 5149 like he 51% stays 49% leaves. Yeah. It could very easily go the other direction and if we do change that job. And again, I I want people to realize I'm not a Jerome Powell fan. It's just where we are, he was a steady hand whether you like it or not. If you change that into someone of the opposite ilk who's just going to spend spend oh jeez, our credit yeah. rating will be hurt. Interest rates will go up almost immediately. The stock market will take a hit. It's it's just that job at this time needs, I mean, whoever was there would right. need to stay. And again, I'm not a Jerome Powell yeah. fan, but just changing that one is frightening. Yeah, I agree. And, and it makes me, yes, yeah, there's some nervousness. So you say, okay, if this is coming, what do I do to protect my finances when things shake out, right? Um, Fixed with, rate debt. <laughs> You know, exactly. And that's exactly where, where my mind is, is, is I want to buy more assets that are going to go up. I want to buy assets that I have a lot of rent growth. Um, I want to buy more rentals, not less. Don't get afraid of where prices are and wait thinking two years, there's going to be this crash and then I'll buy then mm-hmm. might be too late. You know, oh, yeah. um, I mean, there will be a correction there. You know, someone has to pay the piper when the can is kicked down the road too far. Mm-hmm. But until then, like you said, it's kind of like the, the, the idea of dollar cost averaging. Yeah. Wherever Always a great day to pay a great time. deal. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So wherever you are at any time in the market, there's going to be deals that help you to mitigate what's coming um, and, and to increase your wealth and your income. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. Great conversation. Yeah. I'm a little nervous, but we're going to go on to topic number three, but before we do that on, how can people follow you and get part of your role? Great. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn at Anna, REI Mom Kelly. You can follow me on my website at greaterpurposecapital.com, where we invest for meaningful impact and strong returns for our investors and in the lives of our residents. That is awesome. Thanks, Anna. Thank you.